Hi, this is Pete Reed from Illuminate ICT. Um, and today what I want to have a quick look at is playing with Google Maps and how we can create custom maps. Now this can be used for all sorts of different reasons. So say for example you're a small charity and you want to show where people can access your services, then you could create yourself a custom map that would show the local areas where people can access the things that they want to access. Or indeed it could be that you're um, planning a, a holiday and you want to actually create a map of the areas that you actually want to visit. Or indeed you've got visitors coming to see you, you can create a map and show people where they want to go or what they would like to see. So again we can actually use Google Maps and custom maps in a variety of ways. So let's actually move across into custom maps and have a look at how we do this. So here we are on Google and as you can see I am actually signed into Google so we're, we're, we're hot to trot. And the first thing I want to do is to come across onto this uh, list of apps and select maps. So here I am on my maps and here I want to come down to it says my custom maps. And on my custom maps I can actually go and create a custom map. Now it does require you to be saved, signed in before you can actually use this but the first thing we've got up here is where we can actually give the map a child, uh, uh, a name. And this is my childhood map. Okay, and these are places from my early years. So again, I can now save that down, uh, and I've now actually given this uh, a name. So what I want to do first of all is move down to the place where I'm going to be. So I'm going to 19 Austral Avenue, and there it is, 19 Austral Avenue, Woolston. And the reason it's gone there is because that is the first place that I can remember living as a child. Now, as you can see here, we've actually uh, got our map. So what I want to do now is to be able to sort of uh, play about with this a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto here, and then I can click on to add to map. Now what's happened now is it's added this to my map and then here I've got the pencil so I can edit what that actually says. So the first thing I'm going to edit is 19 Austral Avenue and I'm just going to put my first oops, childhood home that I can remember. Okay. Now here what I've got is I've got the ability to add an image or a video. So I'm going to click on to add an image um, and I'm going to add an image URL because what I've got here is a photograph that was taken in the front garden of that house when I was um, a child. So there it is um, and that's me stood large and proud in the middle there. So that's the image that I actually want to use. So I'm just going to go back to close that and then I'm going to right click on that image copy the image URL back to my childhood map and then I can just paste it in there and select it. Okay and so I can actually put some additional notes underneath there so um, it could be for example um, that I may want to oops let me just click onto there uh, say uh, this is a family gathering in the early 1960s. Okay, and then I can make it, then I can save that. Clicking on across there would actually move it back. And so I've now got this information here, and if I click onto it, I can get the picture, the photograph up. Now, the next thing I want to add in is uh, where I went to school. Now, from here, I would walk up here, down Barnfield Road, and across to Hall Road, and the school was down here, this is Wolston County Primary School. Now, as children, we had to use the uh, the entrance down the side here, because that's where the entrance was for the infant school. So here I've got the ability to add a marker. So I can click onto there, point to the place where I want it to go, and then I can actually type in uh, something like infant school entrance. Oops, let me go and correct my spelling. Um, and I was there in, uh, I think it was Mrs. Hurst was the name of the teacher uh, that we actually had at that school. Uh, and I started there in, 
I think it was 1961 that uh, I would have started that school. So again, I can actually um, add a photograph. So I click onto there, image URL, that's good. So I can come across here onto my photos. And there we've got a photograph of, uh, of that school. So I can copy the image URL back onto my childhood maps and paste it in there. So there we've got a picture, that's Mrs. Hurst. Uh, and that's uh, uh, that's me when I was a child. And as you can see, I was stood directly in front of Mrs. Hurst. In fact, I seem to remember that she actually just released my shoulders um, from her hands when that photograph was taken, because I was not necessarily the sort of young person who would stand about. So if I select that image, I can then close that down again. And there we are. So as you can see, it's very easy to add uh, pictures or images onto a map and to add points. The next point I want to add is I'm looking now for the British Legion. And there it is. There's the British Legion. Now, the British Legion, uh, I remember as a child, was where we had a party. Now, I cannot for the life of remember why we had a party, but a party we definitely had. And it was definitely held at that point. So I can come down onto here uh, and I can put in... Uh, party at the Legion. Now part of me thinks it was a Christmas party but I'm not certain. So this was a, an early party. I wonder if it was actually a, a birthday party for somebody but to be honest if it was a birthday party it was certainly more lavish than uh, anybody else that we knew uh, was having at that particular time. So it was a party and again I can click onto here and then again I can come across onto the photos and there we've got the photo of, uh, of me, uh, my brother and my sister at, uh, at a party. Now, all I remember at this party really is the orange juice, because uh, we actually got uh, two bottles each, I seem to remember. We also had um, uh, beef paste sandwiches and beef paste rolls and jelly and blancmange in uh, little paper cases. I remember it well. So, OK, so I can again, I can right click onto that one, copy the image URL, move across to my childhood map and paste it in. So there it is. It's in there and I can select it and save. So again, as you can see, I'm now able to add these various bits and pieces into my uh, into my uh, map. Now, other things that I seem to remember from my map uh, or from my childhood was uh, uh, little jobs that we were asked to do. And one of them was walking next door, next door's dog. So what I can do is I can actually put in our dog walking route. And we actually started out at the house. And then we'd walk up to the top of the road. Down here to the bottom. And then across Hillock Lane. All the way. Down Halls Lane. And then back up Austral Avenue. Now, I'm not going to join those lines up completely. And the reason I'm not joining those lines up completely is because if I do, then that would form a polygon. And a polygon is would be the shaded area. So this was uh, our dog walking. And it was known universal, uh, universally as the block. So we would walk round the block. And for walking the dog, and that was worth... 3D. So we used to get 3D for walking the dog. Now for people who are not used to sort of 3D, that's probably about um, just over one penny, just one P uh, in today's money. So I can actually um, save that now. And as you can see, I've now got my, uh, my dog walking track all set inside of here as well. Now, other areas that we could actually put onto here was what I did with that 3D. Now, that 3D was always spent down here at the shop. And here we'd got the post office that was run by Mr. Mather. And next door we had pickups. And pickups uh, was also sold sweets and things of that nature. And as children, we always had that, uh, that idea of which was best to buy something that you really liked, like a, a small bar of chocolate, or to buy something that would actually last, like pineapple chunks or pear drops. And I seem to remember buying pear drops and gobstoppers with the idea of being able to make them last as, as long as possible. 
all the way down to a little nut in the center. And again, we'd actually go there on a fairly, uh, fairly regular basis when we were young children. Okay, so up until about the age of seven or eight, that was probably the extent of my stamping grounds. From there, we actually moved on. So when I was about eight, nine, something of that nature, we started to play all sorts of games. Now here, Manchester Road was a no-go area. You were not allowed to go across Manchester Road under any circumstances, under fear of retribution. So here is Grey Mist. And Grey Mist was one of the places that we spent a lot of time as children. So Grey Mist was where we actually learnt fishing. We built rafts. And we went swimming. And we went swimming mostly because we couldn't build rafts. But that was very much an area that was out of bounds. So again, we went there on a fairly regular basis, but it was certainly not allowed. The other area that we went was across this way and we went down here to a place down here where we used to call Peggy Walsh's. Now I don't remember this stream being laid out in that manner. That stream I'm sure has been uh, reassigned to take all sorts of different shapes because it used to be a, a very different, uh, different shape. But down here we actually had all sorts of other things. So for example here there was a farmer's field. And the farmer every year grew potatoes. And what we would do is every year we would actually go in and um, borrow some potatoes, I think is the technical phrase. And then we would come back and build campfires and roast potatoes until they were black as charcoal um, and fairly horrible. But we used to sort of wolf them down um, and really enjoy ourselves. Now this area here we used to call Peggy Walsh's. So again, let's actually put in a little uh, area here. So this area here, we would call Peggy Walsh's. And as you can see, we've actually got the, um, the area there nicely set up where we can actually go in and play about with it and change anything that we actually want. Okay, so as you can see, it actually gives us some indication of the way that it's actually laid out as well. So as you can see, we've got all of these different tools that we can actually use in order to be able to describe the areas uh, that we actually had, or, or the points and areas and walks and things of this nature. So as you can see, what we've actually got here is the area that pretty much summed up my childhood. Everything else that we did uh, up until the age of about 11 um, outside of that region was very, very rare indeed. Uh, although I can remember taking some interesting walks uh, when I was about 11 up to Warren Lane here because at Warren Lane we had a little disco, Warren Lane Disco I think we called it because hey there wasn't a lot of imagination and that was run in the local chapel and there was where we used to play and sing uh, and dance and whatever. No I think that's a lie, I don't remember dancing at all but there it is. Okay. So that's how we can actually create uh, our own little custom map. So if we actually uh, save that map, what we've got here then is the ability to share that map. And so what we can do is I can actually share that map, a link to it, to share only, and it's accessible only to people I want. I could share the link by Gmail, by Google+, by Facebook, or by Twitter. I can declare who has access to it, so I can give different people and indeed, I can actually give specific people uh, the various bits and pieces uh, that, that I would like them to, to be able to have access to. So I can actually give them editing rights and things of that nature. But all in all, this is the way that it, uh, that it operates in order to be able to create um, a Google map. OK, I hope that helps. I hope you found that interesting. And I look forward to talking to you later if you've got any questions. Cheers.